insolite Favorite Marguerite You have probably heard of Louis Vuitton's recent menswear campaign with Rihanna. Pharrell Williams definitely engaged in some epitage as a new creative director of the French brand, showcasing his bold and creative approach. The campaign attracted a lot of attention and made a strong appearance challenging gender roles and the very concept of fashion. Rihanna, pregnant with her second child promoting menswear collection, is a perfect ambassador of today's changing and shifting world. But is her image aligned with the brand essence? Is it consistent with the values and heritage of Louis Vuitton founded in 1854? Or maybe we are witnessing the beginning of Louis Vuitton's rebirth in a new era. As you might have noticed, luxury brands advertising is now flooded with celebrity endorsements. Prada is advertised by Remy Malik, Versace by Dua Lipa, Love by Audrey Plaza, Gucci by Hale Bailey, Prada by Scarlett Johansson, Tiffany & Co. by Florence Pugh, Valentino by Florence Pugh. Wait, what? Are there any other actors in Hollywood? Luxury brands are built and should be managed differently. The person pictured on the advertising poster is a personification of the brand. They must be consistent with what we call brand image and brand essence, share brand's values and not only be the face of the brand, but its soul. And if a celebrity endorsed two brands simultaneously, how could the customer possibly differentiate these brands? More importantly, luxury brands are built on the strong individual vision around a unique character and they must protect their authenticity from erosion. Celebrity endorsements can be very dangerous for luxury brands and despite just creating scandalous publicity, can seriously damage the brand image. So let's see why luxury brands shouldn't use celebrities in their advertising. Endorsements gone wrong Well, first of all, there are numerous examples of luxury brands' campaigns using celebrity endorsements that have gone extremely bad. Who on earth would have thought that Sharon Stone, who partnered with Dior to promote their diamond and black sapphire chronograph watch, would say such a horrible thing? In 2008, when 68,000 people died during the earthquake in China, Sharon Stone said that those deaths were a punishment for a bad karma due to China's occupation of Tibet. Obviously, this caused widespread anger and she was called a public enemy of all humanity. Needless to say, her partnership was immediately cancelled and despite issuing an official apology, Dior couldn't undo the damage to its image. Conspicuously, there was an immediate negative impact on Dior's sales. But what's even worse, the long-term association was created and damaged the brand image. And it took some time for Dior to recover for this mismanagement. The trickiest part of managing celebrity endorsements is that you are working with living people, not their images. All people, whether famous or not, have their moments of weaknesses and decadent tendencies, so nobody is perfect. But the brand image and personality are the exact opposite. They are perfect constructs existing in creators' imagination. Frozen in their supremacy, they must be protected from profanation. And every contact with the flesh and blood human is a risk of being disgraced. For example, supermodel Kate Moss was an iconic Chanel girl in the late 90s and even became the celebrity face of Coco Mademoiselle Perfume in 2005. But shortly after, she was dropped by the brand when numerous newspapers published photographs of Kate reportedly showing her using cocaine. Coco Mademoiselle quickly became Cocaine Mademoiselle, or Cocaine Kate in press, drawing lots of negative attention to Chanel. Undoubtedly, the brand image was seriously damaged. Unlike in Dior's case, Chanel had a long-term collaboration with Kate Moss. That's why her image was already very closely interlinked with Chanel's. There was a backward association established between the model and the brand. So when you think of Chanel, you remember Kate Moss in the exact same way when you think of Kate Moss and her cocaine addiction, you remember Chanel. That's how a cognitive bias emerges and Chanel becomes associated with substance abuse. 
To avoid such issues, luxury brands must obey the anti-laws of marketing and be managed on a contrary to mass market brands, believing that there's no such thing as bad publicity. No publicity is bad publicity. How true luxury brands build their independence. For luxury brands, it is absolutely crucial to maintain their independent and unique image, as they are often built on a strong, one-of-a-kind artistic foundation. This foundation gives birth to inimitable brand personality. It is a set of human characteristics that are attributed to a brand name. Just imagine if Gucci or Dior were humans, what features would they have? It's pretty much how you describe a brand personality. Is your brand easygoing or serious-minded? Is he or she energetic or calm? Are they witty or exquisite? I have experience constructing brand personality and it's a pretty exciting process when you feel like you are a novelist writing your characters for a new book. Surely it is a bit oversimplified, but I plan to do another video on most famous brand's personalities. Now, when you understand that brand personality is as unique as each human soul, it is quite clear that whoever is pictured on brand's advertising materials must be consistent with this personality. Therefore. Florence Pugh from earlier example, just can't be simultaneously the face of two brands with different personalities, unless these brands are soul twins or a person advertising them is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. To avoid this kind of confusion along with bad publicity, which is absolutely toxic for luxury brands maintaining their carefully constructed image and myth protected by generations. Luxury brands usually avoid celebrity endorsements. According to an anti-law of marketing by Jean-Noël Capferrer, luxury brands must keep stars out of their advertising. Using stars to promote luxury products is extremely dangerous. A luxury brand is quoted by the stars in the same way as those stars are quoted by journalists and paparazzi. It means that personal life and issues of celebrity may become issues of the brand, as we saw in Chanel and Dior cases. But there's even more in-depth incompatibility between the world of luxury and the celebrity world. Mm. Calling on the services of a star is tantamount to saying that the brand needs some of this star's status just to survive, and admitting that it has none of its own. For the luxury brand, it is a gross error of strategy, for it turns the relationship on its head. Only brand domination, standing above everything like a god, is acceptable, not simply behaving like any ordinary mortal. If celebrities are used to promote the luxury product, the status of the latter is reduced to that of a mere accessory. This entire law may sound provocative and eccentric, like luxury brands are pretty full of themselves. But just think of it, luxury is usually perceived as something superior, as a perfect, unattainable masterpiece, a dream. Apparently, luxury is not as superior as superlative, it doesn't compare to anything. Truly one-of-a-kind brand personality is strong enough on its own, because it has vision, heritage and core values. To protect its personality and its independent status, luxury brand managers must assert some type of dominance by deliberately excluding celebrity endorsements from their advertising ideas. For example, Hermes has been more than successful without stars in their campaigns. While Hermes doesn't traditionally rely on celebrity endorsements in the same way many other luxury brands do, they often focus on storytelling in their campaigns. This storytelling might involve the history of a product, the tradition behind its creation, or other tales that connect consumers to the brand's rich heritage. Look at how meticulously they capture brand's essence on these photos, but without compromising the brand personality. Speaking of personality, celebrities usually have their own strong images and strains that most certainly will conflict with brand personality. For instance, celebrities are living people in the real world, where everyone expects opinions, aesthetic or political preferences from them, while brand personality is not burdened with such anticipation. Hermes is considered as one of the strongest and superior luxury brands because it was able to build and maintain its own reputation without any energizers. 
Another yes. example is Goyard. This luxury leather goods brand has historically avoided celebrity endorsements and large advertising campaigns altogether, instead relying on word of mouth and exclusivity to maintain its allure. Although they do not pay celebrities for endorsements, many celebrities are known to purchase and flaunt Goyard products, thereby providing free advertising. This organic endorsement by high-profile figures contributes to the brand's allure without the brand actively seeking such endorsements. Goyard's strategy revolves around exclusivity, heritage and discretion. By avoiding the limelight, they have paradoxically shone brighter in the world of luxury goods, attracting those who value understated luxury and are in the known. And finally, Bottega Veneta. Although they have used celebrities occasionally, their general philosophy encapsulated in their slogan, when your own initials are enough, emphasizes discrete luxury. It is to be said that there are different kinds of celebrities. Louis Vuitton once featured Mikhail Gorbachev, the last leader of Soviet Union, in their ads. Is it because Louis Vuitton is a weak brand and Gorbachev is more famous among fashion enthusiasts? Hardly. The reason is Gorbachev is much more than just a politician in this particular context. He is a symbol and embodiment of the end of long and ambiguous era the sign of tectonic movement in the history crust. It is certainly bigger than the brand's image and at times like this it is not beneath the brand to manifest its presence during the shift in the global picture. Brands wants to be a part of the history, not Gorbachev's dubious fame. On the contrary, using such figures as pop star singers, Hollywood or TV actors is to draw on their popularity and audience. It is a common tool in brand management known as brand energizers, conceptualized by David Arker, the father of branding as an academic study. Almost all brands need energy in order to gain visibility and support key associations. And one way to gain this energy is with a knownable internal branded energizer. Another route is using an endorser, a personality that is contemporary visible, on-brand, energetic, authentic, and in the news. In this case, the endorser donates some of their audience and attention to the brand, energizes it. It works well with mass-market products like soft drinks, sneakers, commodities, but true luxury brand doesn't need external energizers, as it has its own limitless internal source of energy stored in heritage and deep connections to the culture and the soil of the country of origin. Now you know that despite numerous warnings, luxury brands continue to risk their authenticity and image to attract more customers by using celebrities in their ads. But there are still some genuine and discreet luxury brands protecting their unique personality and allure by sourcing the energy from the inside. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about new Louis Vuitton's advertising with Rihanna? Are they desperate for attention and bold enough to kick up a row? Or are they capturing a process of historical shift in the modern world? Thank you for watching this video. Like and share if you learned something new today. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video on Thursday with more exciting insights on luxury branding.